Max is a post-apocalyptic anime film that takes place in the year 1999. At the millennial age, the concluding battle for humanity's future is staged. Kamui Shudu's destiny has been decided as he returns to Tokyo to face his ultimate challenge. The Dragons of Heaven, Defenders of the Earth, stands ready to protect the world from the Dragons of the Earth, who are the seven angels of legend that embrace the devastation of the planet to bring about its purification. Now Kamui must decide which side to fight for, realizing that two of his childhood friends, Fuma and Kotorimanu, are in grievous peril. Kamui decides to step into his fated position in the climactic struggle of the Year of Destiny. This anime came out 20 years ago, like, well, actually over 20 years ago. Um, yeah, this, <laughs> I was very young when I seen this anime. This was actually the very first anime I've seen. It wasn't the generic old ones like Ghost in the Shell, Perfect Blue, Cowboy Bebop, the, the Ninja Scroll, basically the old animes that people like to shove at new millennial people's faces to tub to watch and watch and watch. No, my first anime that I've, like, laid my eyes on was X and again it was it was released in 1999 and if you guys remember if you guys was around that's watching this in 1999 that was the first epidemic um like rumors that saying that 2000 was the end of the world and the world is coming we're like we're, we're you know we're gonna fall like the new world order and all that stuff and television shows commercials like people was beginning to make books about it and, you know, it, it like Family Guy did that they had like an episode where, you know, Y2K, the inner world is going to come in like in, you know, in 2000. But um, I didn't really watch those. My, <laughs> my little epidemic was X because X, it came out in 1999 and then it had that little epidemic as well. But instead of it being like a, you know, a nuclear explosion or something leaking out and like a virus spreading or whatever. It was about people who just trying to destroy the world. And it, it, in my opinion, I thought it was great. I thought this anime was was pretty damn good. And I was only nine years old seeing this. I was very young seeing this. I still have the movie. <laughs> I still have it. Um, and I watched it last <laughs> night just so I can get my mind ready for this review. And even today, it still traumatizes me in a good and in a bad way because this anime has its problems. But let's talk about the good. I just want to say that whew, even though this anime was was a bit old, it was ahead of its time when it comes to the when it when it comes to the animation detail itself. There were some scenes on there that really had me shocked. I remember when I was nine years old when I was first seeing it. And they like it was like a couple scenes that just literally had my jaw drop. And one of the scenes was when our main protagonist, Kamui, was in the verge of trying to save Kotori as he was running into the river of blood. And that was even to this day, that's like a traumatizing scene to me. And I'm like, that's that's a not a bad scene. That scene is actually pretty badass. I, I just like the I just like the how the work was done on that scene. And then there was a scene where he had a dream. And he um, he went to um, go to his bedroom and then like I don't want to spoil it but like just just the lighting of the anime itself and that scene and like I don't know how y'all rooms are set up but if y'all watch this anime like y'all room of you know bright up purple and and pink and black <laughs> like you're in a freaking neon um like you're in a club or whatever like when I was young when I seen that shit I was like what the fuck you know so it really like sparked me and the anime was very ahead of its time i, I love the characters um especially especially one of my side characters which is well it's two of them it's yuzuria is yuzuria nekoi and it's her dog inuki oh yeah and how can i forget arashi 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 is a, is a badass character i love her a lot and each of these characters have different unique abilities and it all plays out pretty well when it comes to just introducing them and just their dialogue and stuff. I was literally drawn in because this anime does not drag at all. As soon as you watch it, like after four or five seconds, you're already getting engaged of what's going to happen as Kamui comes to Tokyo because of his mom's wish of him just trying to protect the whole world and just protect his friends and stuff. But at the same time, even though you be embraced with these characters, these good guys and stuff, it also shows you a perspective of the bad guys situ scenario as well of them just trying to end the world and just trying to, you know, bring the order back because they're because apparently 
the person who was bringing these bad guys together, which is Kanoi, is, is is letting people know and letting her sister know, which is what is her name? Henato. <laughs> Because they're sisters and they're just trying to, you know, figure out which is right, which is not right. And Hinato, she's basically like the Nick Fury. She's trying to get seven people to help, you know, save the world. As in her sister, Kanoi, she's like the Thanos. But unlike Thanos, she doesn't fight. She just has the people fight for her as she try to gather seven people to try to defeat these um these good guys and stuff. And the fight scenes are pretty intense. They are engaging as hell. And the reason why I say that is because by each of these characters that have their own different unique abilities, people will die a lot. There's a lot of deaths on here. This is this is my first Game of Thrones anime. It wasn't I Can Make a Kill, even though I've seen people review it. And um, I watched it myself, and then it was just amazing how people were saying that I just can't believe they would add this on an anime when you get so in depth into the characters and then they get killed off. You need to watch X because X does not shy away. I was, I was attached to these characters, and again, I was very young. So when I was into that death of just trying to get myself involved and just, you know, to the character's dialogue and stuff, and then when things started happening and the death count was starting to increase, I was like, what? This anime traumatized me good in, in a bad way, like I said. Um, and as for the villains, well, there's there's a couple of villains that, that, that completely grew on me. Like Shugo Asagi, the person who does the water elements, he does, you know, he, you know, he uses water and stuff. I liked his Shugo, I liked his attitude. He was just a calm, nice, steady type of person, but at the same time, he, when things were serious, he was serious. And he handled it all with class and stuff. And then Fuma. <laughs> Fuma. The main bad guy of this anime. <sighs> Fuma is what would, what would you happen if the director of Dragon Ball Z talks to the director of Naruto and told him, hey, look, how about we create a bad guy that's like Frieza and that's like Cell and has the attitude of Itachi. That's how Fuma is. Fuma, when you see him, he, you get scared of him. Because he doesn't just kill the good, he, like he has no source of just, he has no filter at all. He does whatever he wants. He seeks whatever he wants to kill. He even kills some of his, some of his own people. And I'm like, what is your problem? People like that, that is very like, optimistic when it comes to them just trying to do what they need to do and they just do not have no filter of just holding back is terrifying and what's more terrifying than a villain that acts like that a villain that's intelligent and Fuma is, is an intelligent person and when I was explaining this on my headline Fuma is Kamui the, which is the main character his best friend so why did he turn evil well <laughs> apparently when Hinato told Kamui that he was going to be the savior, that was when her sister Kanoi realizes that if Kamui's going to be the savior, I'm going to have to need some backup. So that's when she told her own best friend, Fuma, that she needs to be on his side. Now, that's way more deeper than that. But she figured if she has his own best friend fight him, then maybe maybe um, Kamui would, you know, would, would hold back. And I thought that was pretty unique. And yeah, yeah, like, that's basically the, the whole premise of the whole thing. Um, it's post-apocalyptic, the end of the world, it does not shy away. Like, you will you will get engaged now uh, and check it out. Now to talk about the things that is not so good. Now, that was me saying this stuff at a young age. And again, I still love this anime. But I'll just try and give you a perspective of what's of, of what you're going to experience by watching it in a good point of view. Let me fix this camera for a second. Hold on. It might tilt again, so if it does that, I apologize. <sighs> this anime has problems. This anime has very bad problems. And I'm gonna first start with the main protagonist himself, Kamui. Now we are all introduced by all these other characters. I mean, we have Sorta, which is another character that I really love. You have Sorta, you have Arashi, you have Anuki, the Phantom Dog, you have 
<laughs> you have so many people. You even have Karen Katsumi, which is a freaking female, like, like, like she's a stripper, and she uses fire. So it's like, it's like, <laughs> they have all these great characters, and they all have great potential. So when we are introduced with Kamui in, in the very beginning, and then when his mother says that he is the main person to, you know, to save the planet, like he is the key. He is the key, basically, and everybody else is supposed to just follow his lead and just like they like he is basically like the Captain Marvel of this whole anime, this whole movie. So when you see this and when you be aware of the whole thing and then when you realize how powerful these other characters is, you'll be on edge. You'll be like, well, I want to see how Camry is, but <laughs> they give you very little of that. They they give you a little bit of that. And if not, not at all. It is not just because of them, like, because this is this is this is over an hour and um and thirty minute film, but my part, but my problem with this is is that it's not just the fact that it didn't really give us enough of Camwee's perspective of just how his power works, but I just didn't I didn't like his attitude. Out of every character that would just jump in and just fight or risk their life to save the world, Camwee backs away. <laughs> He say he doesn't want to do it. He just, he just want to just lay low. He just want to protect his friends. Dude, you, the world is in danger, meaning that your friends are in danger. Protect your friends by protecting the planet by fighting these dudes. Why is you just sitting there? Like, seriously. And again, this is our main protagonist. This is the person we're supposed to be rooting for. This is the person that gave us the engagement of what this movie should be about. Because as this movie grows, you expect him to grow as well. But apparently he keeps... At it. Even in the end climactic movie scene of this anime, he still backs away. Even though most of his friends are dead... <laughs> Even though Fuma has basically killed almost everybody, he still shies away. And there's even a scene where he goes to a traumatic loss because of Fuma. I'm not trying to spoil too much, but when he goes to this scene, it still does not break him. You're not going to get a Gohan on this movie. You are going to get a Shinji Ikari from Invangel. This is this is basically how Kamui is. He is Shinji Ikari from Invangelion. And I hate animes like this i hate movies like this i hate i just hate shows like this in general where it has a great story because in van Yellen has a great story tokyo ghoul has a great story but what i do not like is that when we are supposed to be engaged with these characters and they're nothing but wimps and i understand if you're a wimp if you're a little if you if you, if you hold back i get that but as the show progresses, you need to progress as well. I do not want you to be a bitch on season three, too. I do not want you to be a bitch by the end of the film. You need to break. You need to... Look, as your friends are falling, as they're struggling, you need to be like, okay, I need to get up. I need to, I need to stop this right now because what's going to happen when some of my favorite characters end up dying and the main character just busy, just, just sitting there? We're going to hate this character. And you're going to hate Camwe. <laughs> You are going to hate the main character, not just because he's a bitch, but because, again, he has this potential. He has power. Apparently, they even treat him like a freaking god. He's a, he's a, he's a god. He's a power of God. He's going to save us all. They worship this dude. But it has they had nothing to show for it. And, it, it. and even at the end of the film, it falls flat when he fights his best friend, Fuma, one of the most one of the most unforgivable like endings into an anime film I have ever experienced. Out of all that, it took just that to picture Broly on the first Dragon Ball Z movie. How strong and high diabolical Broly is, is how indestructible, and you would think that it would take something to defeat him, as in fusion or as in a new transformation from Goku. But what would it take? <laughs> That's all it freaking took. But what I'm saying is, if you think that's bad, with Fuma and all this potential, because like I said, Fuma is a badass. I, I'm planning on getting a freaking tattoo of Fuma on this arm and Kamui on this arm as Angel. But and I'm still going to do it. I'm just waiting for this whole freaking thing to clear off. But uh, but look, the ending was a disappointment. And it's not just for Kamui. I believe that every character on there had great dialogue, except Kamui. I did not like Kamui. I didn't watch the movie for, for Kamui. Even when I was freaking nine years old, I was a little disappointed. I was like, what, that's it? <laughs> but 
um, the characters that I end up growing to, as in Yuzuria Nekoi and her phantom dog, you know what? They don't really show you much of how Yuzuria's power is. They don't really give you any of that at all in the film, so don't even look for it. But her phantom dog is a badass. I like her phantom dog. In fact, I like her phantom dog so much, I'm going to show you exactly what he does in the film. Take a look. You're going to be doing that a lot when it comes to these characters embracing their full potential. You are going to be like this. I'm not kidding. When it comes to them fighting these people and when things get down and dirty, they only show you very little of what they can fully do. And it's like, it's, 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 it's a, it, it, I can't say, I can't say slow burn. It's a, it's a, it's a disappointment. And then you'd be like, is that it? Are you serious? Don't get me wrong. The fights are engaging, like you and me on the edge of your seat, but it's not satisfying battles, even with the bad guys. Like, they don't really show much of what the bad guys can do. Like, they just show, they all, like, fight each other, and then they, and, like, one little blow can just kill them. Even with my girl, Arashi, the Samurai Warrior, she, I'm sorry to say this, but out of everybody that has a, has a unique power, Arashi, she's just a Samurai Warrior that can fly. She had more bad assery of her scene better than anybody else. That's in a good side, of course. <laughs> it's just her intensity, just how she looks. When you, <laughs> you think that this would be like a great film, and I think the reason why I've um, I've gotten so mad about it is because when I first seen this film, later on, they released Tokyo Babylon. Tokyo Babylon is a prequel to X, and it's about a guy, his name is Subaru Subaragi. He's not Subaru, he's a detective slash spiritualist when it comes to him doing rituals and just trying to, you know, cleanse evil spirits. It, it was a great anime. In fact, I, I'm going to be reviewing that soon. But why didn't that not come out before X did? And even after that, the television series, where, where is this at? Yeah. Actually, I've got them both right here, actually. This is the X television series. This is Tokyo Babylon. They both came out way after the movie. And I kind of feel like that's bogus, and that's kind of disappointing. That is very disappointing because we know these characters on this movie. We know these characters on X, and we know the fate of these characters already, so it's irrelevant to release these and to see how they are. If you want to do it right, be like the Marvel series, where they give us these movies, when they give us these comic books of how these characters are, so when they when you release this movie, when they're all together, this will be a movie that everybody will be talking about if y'all done this right. I believe that every good character needed a movie besides Subaru Smaragi that lasts only freaking five minutes in the film I'm not kidding he lasts less than five minutes in the film but even though he had less screen time even though he was in the very beginning and he only lasted five minutes he deserved a movie but everybody else was in there the whole freaking route and they didn't get a movie I believe that if you gave everybody their movie Yuzuria deserved a movie. Arashi deserved a movie. Everybody deserved their own movie. And then they would fight one of the members of the Dragon of the Earth just so we can, or maybe not even that, just fight, the, fight like a certain enemy that really opposes a threat. And then, after they defeat that enemy or the Dragons of the Earth, then that's when Hinato shows up like Nick Fury and tells him that I'm trying to bring somebody into the X initiative. You know, and then at the ending credit scene, I'm thinking too much of Marvel, at the ending credit scene, then it would show her sister, Kanoi, trying to bring somebody in her perspective initiative. Because one thing I like about the show is that it shows both sides of how the good guys and the bad guys play out. It does this. Problem is, it came out after the movie. How would you like it if in Avengers Endgame came out? Like, if it was the first movie that came out, not Iron Man, not Spider-Man, not freaking Captain America, but Avengers Endgame came first. And again, no comic books at all, not comics included. But you see Endgame first, and then these movies came out, and then these books came out second. You would hate Endgame. 
Because you again, you may know these characters just by watching the film, but these characters will fall flat because we would not know anything about them that much. That's essentially what they did with X. I wasn't engaged with the deaths with these characters. I didn't. I was just shocked that they died so easily and so quick. Good guys and bad guys. And then I was just so mad of, the, of, of, of you know, of just our main protagonist, can't we? Just how he was just a Shinji Akari of the freaking film. If they would have done what I just, you know, reiterated of just how they, how they should have done it correct of how every good guy deserved his own film. And then they would have just, and then, and then X came out where they all just be like the Avengers and they just, after we all just seen all their movies and they just clash together and then Camry shows up. Jesus, this would be the film that everybody would be talking about. But people rarely talk about this film. I have to literally dig into a ground of just pearls and necklaces that people don't even freaking wear anymore just so I can ask somebody, have you seen, because everybody talks about the same old generic movies all, all, all the time. Like people talk about Ninja Scroll, people talk about Akira, people talk about Ghost in the Shell, people talk about all these, these films that if you was around back then, it will be hard for you to miss. Even people that's not even into anime know these things. But when I talk about, hey, have you seen X? They be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you know? And I understand. I, I understand. I, I get it. X just swept under the rug. But if they would have done what I just explained, when it, when it, if they just had every character had their own movie release first, if X came out a little later, then again, this would be an anime that would be very hard to miss. And I think out of every character that would have a movie, I think a lot, I, 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 I'm sorry, I have a boner for Arashi. It's just, it's just her scene in that movie. You really get engaged, even though she was just fighting freaking cords and devil bats and stuff. But her, you was like, you would be like, Jesus Christ. Even today, if you watch that scene, if you watch the film, you'd be like, she's really not that. She don't take shit from nobody. And of course, Sorata, the flirtatious guy, he tries to hit her, on, hit on her. Sorata Sora kind of reminds me of myself, where he tries to toss a girl that is just over, they're just over his league. <laughs> they don't give him a time of day, but at the same time, he still tries to, you know, act the way he he does it so she they can get her attention i like sorata sorata really grew on me he's like the comic relief of the anime i'm sorry i'm freaking sweating right now let me get a towel but i've been wanting to review this anime for a while i've been wanting to in fact this is the very first anime i wanted to review but i've i got done watching want to be the strongest in the world and that kind of grew on me so i wanted to watch that as my brain gotten hot enough so um X it, it was my next objective, and I finally reviewed it, and I'm finally showing you guys. And one little thing I want to mention before I give this a final, um, a, a, you know, a final rating. There, there was some things on the film that I just did not understand. Like the the film breaks the fourth wall, um, and it's just it's just under, it's just crazy. Now, whenever the dragons of the heaven fights the dragons of the earth they have to set up a barrier around them and around a city to prevent any civilians or any people women and children to get hurt in their fighting y you know so as this was explained shugo asagi which is the dragons of the earth was basically reiterating this saying that let me guess like so as as he was getting ready to fight the members of the dragons of the heaven he was like Oh, so you're going to release a barrier? That's a very big deal. So apparently if you get killed, then the barrier will shatter, then the full force of the whole barrier will take place in the real world. So then Sorata was like, oh, okay, yeah, so you get, you done your homework. So then Shugo was like, yeah, you know, I've seen it myself. Like one of the members of the Dragons of, he of the Heaven has fallen and the shield crumbled with everything around it. So let me guy let me show you guys how it really was. And that's exactly what he did. He he she just watch what he did. One little thing, Sorita. We don't want to disturb all the good people in this neighborhood trying to get some sleep. That's very thoughtful, Arashi. Yes, indeedy, babe. Babe. Yep, just love their manners. I'm gonna kill him.
yes, that's very dramatic, but I'm not sure how useful it is. Oh, sure, the shield will put the area within it into another dimension, and then any damage occurring within the shield will not be replicated in the real world. Big deal. Don't forget, if the creator of that power shield's killed, which he could be at any time, drown for argument's sake, then the power of the shield will be nullified, and the full force of the damage will be felt. Well, that's the theory. I've seen it with my own eyes. A dragon of the heavens died, and its shield crumbled. Let me show you how it was. How did he do that? <laughs> how did he do this? I mean, did did they had a freaking um? <laughs> Did they did he all just sat down in the freaking theater and just seen that part or was it just a scene for us to see ourselves the you know the viewers but that doesn't make any sense where was we at when we, we look that that part take took place like five minutes later no 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 that, that's like 10 to 15 minutes later i think but where was we at when we seen that scene nowhere of course we will still watch the movie so of course we know how the whole thing starts out or maybe he said let me show you as in a threat and then it showed that part, but it wasn't explained. I was like, Where did that break the fourth wall? Like, did, they, did, did he actually just show them that part? I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, that scene made no sense. I was like, what in the world? <laughs> but, um, I understand if it was probably just like a, you know, like a funny scene or whatever, just like how they did with Fully Cooley, where they had all of the, um, the characters just busy sitting in the movie theater as they were showing the scene of what our main character busy kissing one of the female, one of the female characters and stuff, and they were just busy just having commentary and stuff, just busy just talking about it or whatever. I get that. That was probably what, what X did. They probably just showed that scene just so it could break the fourth wall as in, you know, let me just show you how it was, and it just shows a part of the movie. But if not, if that wasn't your attention, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, what? Did, why would you show that? Like, I didn't, I don't, I don't get it. That that didn't make any sense to me. Sorry for the noise in the background. They just they act like a fool over there. But anyway, <laughs> at the end of the day, this is not a bad anime. This anime is not bad at all. If if you're gonna watch this just so you can have it, I'm, this camera keep tilting. If you're gonna watch this just so this, you know, just so you can have it, um. Just so you can satisfy your curiosity, I suggest you guys watch the series first. Watch Tokyo, what well, you know, watch Tokyo Babylon first, then watch the series. Do not touch this. Do not touch this until you watch those two. Again, watch Tokyo Babylon first, then watch this movie. No. Watch Tokyo Babylon, then watch the series, then watch the movie. <laughs> okay? Um, but other than that, those are the issues that I need to address. Again, it's not a bad anime, but then again, it's not a masterpiece. But this is an anime that is memorable to me. It, it has a good place in my heart. And me just criticizing it and just showing you the points that need to be addressed is just me showing it, giving you, giving it tough love, honestly. But um, other than that, like I said, it's worth to watch. It's worth to um, you know to, to look at it, whatever. Especially if you and especially if you up in age like I am, and you just like the anime, you, you, the old anime start um, style or whatever. I recommend you watching X. Even though I addressed those points, I just had to let you guys know so you would not be disappointed um, that much. Honestly, I'm gonna have to give this a C. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's just, even though I love this anime, at the at its peak, because at the same time, I'm the only one that's, that reviewed this. I'm the only one that, because I, I looked at people's um channels of them reviewing animes, and no one has reviewed X. No one has talked about it. I mean, I know people reviewed other old animes, even animes older than X, but they only review those older animes because those are animes that people are still talking about. Dude, if you know X, review it. But I, hey, I, know, I understand. Did it to get your views up. I understand that. But I don't really care about views and stuff. I like to like to just beat people to the punch and just review the things that people don't want to review as in Hidden Gems so people can just look at it. Like I said, it's, it's an okay anime. It's great. But at the same time, it's not fantastic. It has major flaws that should have been addressed. If they would, if they, if they released this, I'm talking in circles. I'm talking in circles. <laughs> but anyway.
I'm surprised that it just rang now. At all times, it just rang now. Well, we're in a classroom, so I, that's why you guys are hearing the noise, busy sweeping the stuff around in, in the room and stuff. So, so I can get my next review up and popping. But other than that, that's all I have for today. Stay tuned for more of my reviews and my um, videos coming your way. This is CT, your critic teacher, and you <sighs> enjoy the rest of your day.